Hi guys, thanks for coming to my little corner of YouTube. I have an amazing DIY to share with you guys today. And it's all about how I turned these hollow core doors in my mom's condo into this with just using quarter inch maple plywood. First, I'm going to give you a list of supplies and keep in mind that the amount of the materials is going to vary greatly on the size of the doors and the amount of doors that you are going to be transforming. So I used quarter inch maple plywood that I got from Lowe's. I got it in four by eight foot sheets and found that about one of these sheets should cover a four foot wide door front and back. Then I had 60 and 80 grit sandpaper for my sander and then I had 120 and 220 grit sanding blocks. I had to use plenty of wood glue and I had to use some fast drying glue because the wait time on this project is the worst part. Then I used clamps or painter's tape, pre-stain conditioner, stain, and polyurethane if you are staining. I had to use plenty of staining brushes and foam applicator brushes. I used tack cloth, staining rags, a wood chisel, and a mallet. I also had a trim puller and then a Phillips head screwdriver. For power tools, I used a table saw to rip cut the boards from plywood sheets. You could also use a circular saw and a jig to do this. Then I used a miter saw to trim off excess length, an orbital sander, a drill, and then a hole cutting jig for your drill to cut the holes for the door handles. The first step is to remove all of your doors and remove all the hinges and hardware. This is also a good time to label the bottom of your door as to where it was from. Oftentimes, these cheap doors fit only in their designated frames. The second step is to rip cut your planks. It is great to do this ahead of time so you have plenty of planks to choose from when you are assembling the doors. Now, plank size is something you need to consider. My doors were all exact to a foot. They were either three foot wide, four foot wide, or six foot wide. So I decided to make my planks about a sixteenth of an inch short of six inches each. That way they, I could leave an eighth of an inch gap between the planks. Step three is to sand down your doors. I used 60 grit on my orbital sander to get off all the finish and to ensure a good surface for the wood glue to adhere to. Step four is to wipe down your door and dry fit your planks. Dry fitting is important to make sure your planks are well cut and all of the spaces are even. You'll find that different sides of the boards are prettier so you just wanna make sure that those are shown. Step five is to start gluing. I used a quicker drying wood glue because the wait times on this project are honestly the worst part. I initially used clamps and weights to clamp down the wood while it dried and then my smart helper friend showed me how to use painter's tape as a clamp. It's a lot more wasteful but way more efficient. You could also use brad nails around the border of your door for a more secure fastening. This was a concern I saw a lot on my Instagram that this would pull up. Brad nailing will help secure it a lot more, but since these are hollow core doors, the only solid wood is around the border, and this is the only space that you can nail into. Though I would never say this is a bad idea, if you are staining the doors, you would need a stainable wood filler to cover the holes from the nails, and I found that my stainable wood filler actually stained darker than my panels. You could try to make your own wood filler from your maple sawdust, though. Certainly, if you paint the doors, the nail filling process would be a lot simpler, so if you are, I would definitely consider that as an option. Here's a look at how we use painter's tape as a clamp. We just kind of taped down wherever it started to pull up and then made sure we had one going down the middle so that it could prevent bowing. Step six is to cut the handle hole from the back side of the door. This way you can use the hole that's already cut in the door and drill from the back side, just enough for the drill bit to stick through. And then I flip the door over and cut the actual hole from the visible side to prevent splintering. It is as easy as placing the drill bit head in the small hole and drilling. Now you can glue planks on the other side of the door and repeat this process so that the hole is cut all the way through. Step seven is to chisel out where we have now added a bit of a ledge from the panels right where the hinges are because we need to be able to put the hinges back in this space. I used a chisel and a mallet to do this and it's kind of tricky the first time but you really do get the hang of it after a while. After I finished chiseling it out, I sanded it down with a 60 grit sandpaper wherever there were any bulges 
And then to make sure I got a good finish where the hinges were, I went back with a 120 grit sandpaper with my little sanding sponge. Step eight is to sand down your doors. I didn't get any footage of this because it would have just been me sanding down doors, but it's actually very important because I sanded down the edges really well with a 60 grit and then an 80 grit to make sure I got all of the finish off of the door itself. I knew that the type of wood that was the actual door and the veneer that I was putting on, those are two different types of wood, so they're going to take the stain differently. And I honestly just tried to get, I got all of the finish off of it and pre-stained and stained and prayed that it was going to look okay. And this is what it wound up looking like. I did not have a problem with this edge. However, I know that there are internet trolls that will have an issue with it. So I have two options for you. The first one is edge banding. Edge banding is made for furniture, cabinetry, you name it. It can go into these type of situations where there's going to be a lot of wear and tear as long as you poly it and protect it. However, a door is meant to fit very snugly in its door frame. So this, if you added to it, might make your door too big for the frame. So that's why I didn't want to deal with that. You could sand down the door frame itself and the door itself a lot. And because the edge banding is not that thick, but it probably is just thick enough for it to not make it not fit in your door frame very well. But you could, I mean, you might even wind up having to chisel it, you name it, I didn't want to deal with it, I was fine with my edge. But this is an option for you that you can definitely consider. The second option is to paint the edge. You can paint the edge a tone that kind of fits with the type of stain that you are putting on your boards. Now, I thought, that this would make it kind of, I mean, it could either make the edge disappear or make it stand out more. So user's discretion, just see what you would like to do. But those are two options that you can consider. The second part that I sanded was the planks itself on both sides with a 220 grit sanding sponge with the grain in order to prep it as best as I possibly could before the pre-stain condition and the stain. Step nine is to wipe down your door with a tack cloth and pre-stain condition both the panels and the edges. Maple is a very difficult wood to stain evenly, but it was all my supplier had, so conditioning it properly was very important. I applied pre-stain with a foam brush, but have read that staining brushes yield better results. I have read that with maple, it's actually better to use a water-based stain. Now, if you do use a water-based stain, you want to make sure that your pre-conditioner is also water-based. It's also best if you stay in the same brand family. For example, I used all Minwax. I read your specific can of pre-stain conditioner, but mine said that I needed to wait two hours before I could apply stain over top. It also said you wanted to wait five minutes after applying it to wipe some excess off. And mine was just soaked all the way up which was kind of nice because then I could pre-stain one side and flip it to pre-stain the other side fairly quickly. Step 10 is to finally start staining. And y'all, I had footage of this and somehow it got erased. Actually, I use a stain brush to apply the stain. I get it in between the grooves of the panels and that's really important. Otherwise you can kind of see it if you look at it from the side. And I wipe all the excess like pooling that happens off with a rag. Now a lot of people have specific rags that they like to do for this, but I just use the white rags that you can get in a bag from Ace. So you just brush it on and then you wipe it off with your rag so that there is nothing really staying on top and it's all just clean and soaked in. Once one side is dry, you can flip it and stain the other. I find that I was able to do this fairly quickly, but I didn't like to put it on the table itself because sometimes I felt like there were some lines that happened if it, you stained it, flipped it, put the stain side on the table. So I actually really like to have it against the wall where it was just like the top apex of the door touching the wall and then there's no lines or any issues with how your stain is going to set. So if you can, do this part vertically. You stain all the way like you, the, here's your door, you're just staining it like this. Step 11 is to poly. Now make sure you look at your can of poly because I had to wait 24 hours after I stained in order to apply my poly, which was 
horrible. If you're using water based, I think that normally it's less than that, but definitely go with the instructions on the actual materials that you're using. I recommend doing at least two coats of poly because you tend to have bare spots no matter how hard you try. I didn't have good footage of this either guys, I'm so sorry, but all you have to do is put it on a sponge applicator, which is just a sponge brush and you wipe it on and you wait for the allotted time to dry before you use 220 sandpaper to sand between coats. I actually would say that, if, especially if you're in a humid area, like these are your bathroom doors, at the very least do three coats. It's just gonna protect your wood more and prevent it from bowing like a lot of my Instagram trolls said was gonna happen. Side note, people in construction have been doing applications like this to metal outdoor doors for a very long time. It is often building code for exterior doors to be metal at their core, but a lot of people really want to have that really pretty wood door. So what happens is that they actually wrap their metal doors in wood similar to this. Now, I am sure this is a much cheaper application than most good builders use, but the idea behind it is still fairly sound especially if you're going to be nailing things into place. If you're worried about how this is going to wear though, that's why DIYers do what they do. We're the guinea pigs, and that way you can see what happens and we can tell you if it's a good DIY or not. Step 12 is to finally add your hinges. I got new ones off of Amazon and they're about $35 to replace for the entire house. Completely worth it. Step 13 is to use a trim puller and mallet to carefully remove your door jam so we can install the new door at its new depth. It helps to move from the bottom up and do the two sides of the door jam before you do the top middle part. I would say that the majority of the questions I received were about this precise part. Of course you can move the door jam for the added amount of wood on that side. But what happens is that your hinge stays in the same place. So when you add to the opposite side, people believe that there's going to be a bulge out and it's going to look bad. This is what it looks like in my house. And we have very, very thin trim. It's kind of a silly picture to take even because you don't really see much of an issue. I think that's because what we've added is not even quite a quarter inch thickness. So there really isn't an issue as far as the profile of this sticking out for me. However, there are jigs that you can buy to put hinges on, right? So if you wanted to, you could use the same jig to move the hinge back a quarter inch. That's totally up to you. It's possible. I think there's a jig and then you use a router tool or something like that. It, it was not an issue for me, believe it or not, because these are so thin. It wasn't an issue. Step 14 is to add your door hardware. Mine was new from Amazon and I had to chisel out for the new door plate, which wasn't too bad with a small chisel. I just outlined where the plate would go, used a knife to score it, and then used a mallet and a small chisel to chisel it out for the new plate. You need to put your door hardware on before reinstalling your door jam so you can close the door and see where the new position of the door jam should be. Step 15 is to finally install your door jam. I used a nail gun to do this, but you can also use a hammer and some small nails. Some people will decide to replace the door jam with new materials, but I didn't worry about it because ours came off intact and I will be painting all of the door frames and trim white so I can fill any holes and paint over them later. Voila, new doors. We love how ours turned out. We color matched to my mom's tongue groove ceiling, which is going to highlight it as a feature, which we're really excited about. We used one part early American to four parts natural Minwax stain to achieve this color. Again, we plan to paint all of her trim white as to highlight the door features even more. I also did all of her sliding doors like this and got some new pull hardware for that. So I'm really excited to reveal that soon. My favorite part of this DIY is that it can be altered so many different ways. You can choose to paint them instead of stain them. Stain them any color you would like. Of course, mine were a little orange for my taste, but again, we were trying to match the stain that she had on her tongue groove ceiling. You can change your hardware out for a completely different style, or you can just apply your planks in a completely different way. These are some examples that you could consider. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thank you so much for stopping by. And for more projects like this, such as how I refaced this vanity and turned it into this, 
subscribe to my channel. That way you can see my tutorials as I post them. Thanks again and stay crafty, friends.